Welcome or welcome back to Readability. If you didn't know already, this is a kid podcast that's all about reading. Don't know a good book to read? Visit Readability and I'll help you out. Every Saturday, I'll either read, review, or recommend different books just for you. Lay back and listen to this week's episode. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the week from me. This time, I'll be reviewing one of my favorite books of all time as of right now. That, of course, is Lovely War by Julie Berry. I read this book a little differently than I did the others because I read this with the Audible audiobook, which was so good. It had um, multiple narrators and there was original music in it. Let me tell you, I immersed myself so much into the story through this way. Highly recommend. Anyways, I have taken the time to let this soak in a little bit more into my brain and yes i can still confirm i love and adore this book so much just as much as when i first finished it i love it so much i want to reread it and that says a lot coming from me because i'm not much of a rereader so yeah that's a good sign and why wait let's just get into the review now lovely war has taken place during the years of world war one and two the love story of four people, two couples, narrated by the Greek goddess Aphrodite, as well as others, but mostly her, so she can release herself from Hephaestus. He caught her cheating on him, as known in the mythology, with his brother Ares. We follow Hazel, a young pianist girl, James, a newfound soldier who is a passionate architecture, Aubrey, another pianist from Harlem, and Colette, a talented Belgian singer. You see how their fates um, connect in the love story of Hazel and James, Colette and Aubrey, beautifully intertwine. The author of the book is Julie Berry. The book is around 470 pages long. The publishing brand is Penguin Books, and this is a standalone novel. To rate this book, it was an easy, easy five-star book. Honestly, I don't think it deserves anything lower than four stars. Of course, if you disagree, that's fine, but I could imagine it giving the rating it doesn't deserve. The book's writing felt so raw and so breathtakingly beautiful. The characters are so easy to love, and the storyline feels achingly real and almost heartbreaking. Oh, if words could describe my love for this book. Like I kind of described in the previous rating segment, I love this book. If my house was burning down, this would be one of the books I would take with me. It's that amazing. Although, yes, there is an although, don't sue me. Um, I wouldn't counter the fact that the relationships develop developed quite quickly and had an insta-love aftertaste. Weirdly enough, despite me not liking insta-love at all, I was fine with it. I I still really enjoyed the romance in this book. Um, The other things in the book that um, I love outshined what was negative in my opinion. I loved how Barry eased the Greek mythology um, aspect really smoothly and kept it something that just made sense. As someone who once, and still does, have an obsession with Greek mythology, thank you Percy Jackson, it was fun seeing these aspects tied into a novel you wouldn't expect it to have. On the contrary, I could see why people wouldn't like this about the novel, which is totally fine. I'll just stick to my opinion about loving it either way. Hello. I wanted to give like a really quick um, warning for the next segment, character thoughts. Um, I didn't realize that it would be um, a little long. <laughs> it's like five minutes long. So just get ready. I guess that represents how much I love these characters and this book. So this book doesn't have much of a plot. Okay, maybe except the war going on. But Lovely War focuses a lot on characters and their development, so let's look into that. First, Aphrodite. If you look up who's the main character of Lovely War, her name's on there. I will complain I did like Aphrodite. She's really entertaining to read about. She's such like a hopeless romantic, and I honestly really adore that about her. I took a picture of a very short line in the book, like very short line. I believe this scene was with Hazel and James near the beginning of the book, of course, And in all caps and italics, it reads, KISS HER! (laughs) Um, I loved her in Percy Jackson, and I love her in this novel. Who can blame me? I'm not going to talk much about the other Greek gods present, because they aren't really much of main characters. However, Aphrodite definitely is. Next, and probably the one you were expecting, or not, because most likely you haven't read this book, Hazel Windicott. She's our main mortal protagonist, along with James, of course, and 
Aubrey and Colette, but it's mainly about Hazel and James. Anyways, I found Hazel really sweet and overall adorable. There's a scene near the end of the book that had me tearing up, not gonna lie, about something she does for someone else. If you know, you know. And if you don't, then go read the book, or you could stick around for my spoiler section. I really adored her as a character, and I feel like she would be an amazing other. Yeah, she gives off those vibes, honestly. Then we have James Aldridge. 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 The soldier would be architect. Much like Hazel, these two were a very charming match. Soulmates, even. James would do anything for anyone, especially Hazel. He's such a good person. Like, a genuinely good person. Sometimes too much of a good person. (laughs) To make that make sense, yes, if you were in danger, he would shoot someone for you. If that sounds a little specific, um, it's because that kind of (laughs) happens in the book. But he quite literally will think and stress about it for the rest of his life. Mm, I I suppose that makes him a good person and not a ruthless murderer. I guess that's a good sign. (laughs) Then we have probably my favorite of the four. I didn't want to have to admit that, but here we are. Aubrey Edwards, the pianist from Harlem. I loved Aubrey. He's funny, caring, loyal, and such a good person. Maybe that sounds a little similar to James, but that's just due to my poor word choice. He cares so much about Colette by the time he meets her. And let me just say that Hazel and Aubrey's friendship is the best. (gasps) Like, I remember in the book, Hazel was about to meet Aubrey because she was like, at the piano and somebody was like hey it's not, i don't i don't know and i was like i clo- I, I semi closed the book and i was like i really hope this is aubrey because they would make amazing friends and they did spoiler <laughs> for how they meet honestly i adore them as friends so much i wish we got more page time with them just talking about music or being friends or talking about pianos i don't know <laughs> Um, I want to say something about a specific song they first play, like, together or talk about, and then gets referenced in other scenes, but I want to save that for later. I could see Aubrey being such a great friend, like, a really good friend. My best friend. (laughs) Finally, we have Colette Fournier. Fournier? Yes. The singer of The Four. Oh my goodness, I, like all of them, fell in love with Colette. I find her really charismatic, and I see a trend, an amazing friend! Like, how much she cares about Hazel is so, like, it makes me so happy. Any interaction they have together just makes my heart warm, and they're like friend soulmates. Is there a word for that? Like, they're friend soulmates. <laughs> She's brave and courageous and in an admi- admirable way, that's the word, stubborn. Despite losing literally everyone she loves, literally everyone from the Germans, her closest friend turned lover, her parents, her siblings, her other childhood friends, she has gone through so much trauma and yet she stays so strong. Like, what a role model okay surprisingly this segment is a little shorter uh it's time for the spoilers but i'd highly recommend you read the book but whatever first off let's discuss when hazel almost died um that was terrifying um i also just found that so admirable about hazel how She would, and I suppose this wasn't super intentional, but how she would sacrifice her life for her friend, Colette. Maybe I should describe how she almost died. (laughs) On the train, there was like, I forget how it happened, but there was this big crash. And um, Hazel shielded herself in front of Colette to save her life. She got like glass, like stabbed in her body. Oh, Ooh. um, we love her so much for doing that. At first, I was like, "Oh no, 
Hazel did that, but it's okay. She's just going to be badly injured. And then Hades' perspective came in. <sighs> Whenever Hades' perspective shows up, you know it's going to end up in death. Like, with when Joey died, when... Oh my gosh. Was his name Frank? I think his name was Frank. When he died. <sighs> However, um, due to Aphrodite and a little bit of Hazel's pleading, he spared her life. Oh, thank you, Hades. (sighs) I can see why someone might find that annoying or maybe a little, like, disappointing as it led up to a happy ending because she didn't die. And I felt that at first, but honestly, I really appreciated it. Um, Like, as Hazel was entering basically heaven, I started crying because I was so scared that out of the four, she was going to die. Oh, boy. And this kind of transitions to the next thing, which is a short, like, me thing. And that's when Hazel plays Beethoven's, oh boy, Pathetique. 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 (laughs) Um, So, I don't know why, but I grew such a sentimental place in my heart for this song when, when, like, mentioned or used in the book, as it was first introduced with Hazel and Aubrey. Um, this is the exact kind of quote. She shook her head. I mean, have you done that before with Beethoven's Pathetique? I think that's how you pronounce it. Oh boy. He made a worry face. Not if that's French for pathetic. She laughed. Ma, pathetic. Wistful, sad, like missing the one you love. Alrighty then, he said. No, I've never played Mr. Beethoven's Pathetic before. I've gone ahead and fixed up his mistakes. He's a ja- He's like a jazz player. Hazel's Hazel's jaw dropped. His what? Anyways, oh, I love their friendship. It's so wholesome. Anyways, um, and since then, I get sad whenever it plays because she plays this when she like is in heaven, basically, like when she when she's like kind of dead. <laughs> um, she plays it at this piano. And I just got so sad for no reason. Well, I guess there's a reason. Um, So yeah, that's it. Just me and my sentimental heart. Oh, well. Anyways. (laughs) James and Hazel's journey in France? France. Yes, France. I forget exactly where. Was it Poplar? Is that? I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyways. Um... Uh, after he gets excuse, he gets like a little vacation from work, the war. <laughs> I love seeing their time together as well as the kiss we've been waiting for. And it was well worth it and had me cheering for them. I mean, to be fair, we were all cheering from them for like right off the bat. And also, and finally, the last chapter of the book. That's it. That the last chapter of the book oh, it made me so happy. Now, would I recommend this book? Hmm, I don't know. Maybe, uh, obviously, yes. I don't know if you can tell, but I really like this book and adore it with all my heart. I don't know if you can tell. I don't think I really made it that obvious. (laughs) Um, Anyways, it was so amazing, and I think everybody should read this at least once in their life. If you like romance, if you like Greek mythology, if you like bo- uh, books set in World War One or Two, then you'll love this book. Um, I also really recommend the audiobook, especially if you can't have the physical copy of it, because the audiobook was so good. It was so well done and so immersive. I don't think I have to explain myself. It was just that good. That five stars. Amazing. I love it so much. And that's a wrap for this week's second episode. I really hope you enjoyed. I had so much fun talking about Lovely War because, oh my goodness, I love this book so much. I really enjoyed these two episodes this week, and I hope you're excited for more content from me. I'm excited to put out more content. Anyways, I'll see you next week, and I hope you have a great day, and keep reading, folks. Bye-bye.